Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have basal cell carcinoma, BCC, which is also known as rodent ulcer, which is a malignant condition in uh, epithelial origin. And it most commonly seen on the exposed surface of skin. So let's learn basal cell carcinoma and its detail. So rodent ulcer which is most frequently develops on the exposed surface of the skin, face and scalp. Okay, skin, face and scalp. In the age group of uh, middle or elderly, so middle or elder age group and also it is peculiar in fair skinned people okay so it is a malignant condition or carcinoma which is seen on the exposed surface of skin face and scalp in middle or elderly people and especially in the fair skinned group of people it is a slow growing and the metastasis is very rare okay it is a slow growing malignancy and metastasis is very rare in this malignancy but can cause a significant local destruction so the most common etiology is uv light exposure that is chronic uh, sunray exposure people who uh, work or people who are exposed to the sunlight every day or very chronic manner and the ionizing radiation uh, like x-rays those who are exposed to ionizing radiation and chemicals such as arsenic people who are exposed to the chemical those who are in industrial area or industrial uh, job where the arsenic is involved and people with immunosuppression immunocompromised people are at risk of this malignancy and also syndromes like xeroderma pigmentosum and nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Nevoid BCC syndrome and xeroderma pigmentosum. Xeroderma pigmentosum. All these are etiology of BCC. So BCC is thought to arise from pluripotent stem cells of the basal cell layer that is why that peculiar name basal cell carcinoma which is arising from the basal cell layer of epidermis as well as the follicular structures such as hair follicle stem cells well moving on to the clinical features it is most frequently in the fourth decade of life fourth, fourth decade and male to female ratio is two is to one most common in male group than female and it is uh, mostly affecting the middle third of the face okay middle third not the upper third or lower third it is affecting the middle third of the face and it does not arise from the oral mucosa so it is not seen intra orally except for invasion from the adjacent skin surface to the intraoral so it is not seen on or it is not arising from the oral mucosa so intraoral lesions are very rare so there are subtypes of uh, basal cell carcinoma one is nodular nodular basal cell carcinoma which is most common so this nodular basal cell carcinoma it begins as a slightly elevated papule with a central depression okay with a central depression which ulcerates heals over and then breaks down again so very mild trauma may cause bleeding eventually the crusting ulcer which appears superficial which develops a smooth rolled border representing tumor cells spreading laterally beneath the skin so there will be lateral spreading beneath the skin and there will be a pigmented type which is the second one 
pigmented basal cell carcinoma the second type pigmented basal cell carcinoma okay so pigmented basal cell carcinoma is in addition to the features seen in the nodular type this type contains black or brown pigmentation black or brown pigmentation so almost clinical features are same as nodular type with a papule with a central depression ulceration and the lateral spreading beneath the epithelium along with black and brown pigmentation and it is more commonly seen in dark skinned people next we have cystic basal cell carcinoma cystic basal cell carcinoma which may contain translucent blue gray cystic nodule blue gray cystic nodule and which mimic benign cystic lesions okay that is cystic basal cell carcinoma now we have superficial that is a fourth type superficial bcc which presents as a scaly patches or papules commonly on the trunk that are pink to red brown in color pink to red brown in color often with central clearing and a thread like border okay that is superficial bcc now we have micro nodular bcc micro nodular micro nodular BCC. this micro nodular bcc which is very aggressive type which is less prone to ulceration it may appear as yellow white when stretched and is firm to touch it may have a seemingly well defined border okay and the last type is infiltrating bcc morphiform and infiltrating morphiform and infiltrating type infiltrating bcc morphiform and infiltrating type these are aggressive types with the uh, sclerotic papule or plaques which may be mistaken for scar tissue border is usually not well defined and often extends well beyond the clinical margins so there will be ulceration bleeding and crusting okay so these are the six types so the first one was nodular then pigmented cystic then superficial micronodular morphiform and infiltrating basal cell carcinoma these are the six types of basal cell carcinoma now in histologic features in nodular and pigmented types the tumor cells called basiloma cells basiloma cells okay in these two types the basiloma cells typically have large oval hypo hyperchromatic nuclei with little cytoplasm okay large nuclei that is hyperchromatic nuclei with little cytoplasm and these are arranged in well demarcated islands which appear to arise from the basal layer and overlying epidermis and which invades into the underlying epidermis underlying dermis sorry whereas in pigmented type the benign melanocytes in and around the tumor which produce large amount of melanin okay so there will be melanocytes which is present in and around the tumor and the superficial type the lobules of tumor cells drop from the epidermis in a multi focal pattern okay and the morphiform type which exhibit infiltrating thin strands of tumor cells in a dense fibrous stroma so these strands of infiltrating type are thicker and have a spiky irregular appearance the micronodular type which appears as a small nodular aggregates of basaloid cells okay so when this basal cell carcinoma is mixed with squamous cell carcinoma which is known as baso squamous carcinoma baso 
squamous carcinoma so those are the histologic explanation of the various types now let's move on to the treatment part of basal cell carcinoma the small lesions such as less than one centimeter lesions we go for surgical excision or laser ablation or electro dissection and curettage with 5 mm margins of normal appearing skin so if it is a one centimeter so we take a 5 mm normal tissue also for the excision so if it is a large lesion we need to go for radical surgery or radiation therapy for sclerotic type or or recurrent lesions we need to use a micrographic surgery which uses like a frozen section uh, evaluation of specially mapped and marked surgical specimen to determine whether tumor tissues has been left behind so that is micrographic surgery micrographic surgery it defines the borders very clearly because of the frozen section evaluation and prognosis is good since recurrence is very uh, uh, it's not common and metastasis is very rare and death if occurs is usually the result of patient's uh, negligence and local invasion into the vital structures so that is all about the basal cell carcinoma or rodent ulcer so we talked about uh, the clinical features the six types its uh, differentiation between uh, clinical features and the histological features and finally the treatment part okay so i'll come up with a new topic in industry and more thank you hello everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more today we have epidermoid carcinoma which is also known as squamous cell carcinoma or scc so which is the most common malignant neoplasm of the oral cavity and uh, it is a neoplasm which exhibits squamous differentiation as characterized by the formation of keratin and the presence of intercellular bridges so keratin formation and intercellular bridges and most specifically squamous differentiation so let's learn the most common malignant neoplasm of the oral cavity So as i mentioned squamous cell carcinoma it is a malignant neoplasm exhibiting squamous differentiation and characterized by formation of the keratin and or the presence of intercellular bridges so the male to female ratio is 2 is to 1 most commonly seen in males and mainly found in the elder age group after the fourth decade so after the fourth decade is most commonly seen in male group and the mortality rate is lowest for lip cancer and highest for the tongue so lip is the lowest and highest is for tongue cancer so it could be anywhere on the tongue Uh, like lips uh, tongue buccal mucosa floor of the mouth palate and most common site is tongue and the least one is lip so etiology is as we all know tobacco is in its various form like smokeless tobacco uh, which is the main cause especially when coupled with excess alcohol and also high exposure to ultraviolet radiation uh, is a predisposing factor also leukoplakia 
poor oral hygiene diet with low levels of vitamin a and vitamin c a and c and uh, inadequate consumption of fruits and vegetable which is also a contributing factor patients who are immunosuppressed they are also in predisposed group and rare conditions like xeroderma pigmentosa and also risk factor for oral cancer has been shown to increase in the presence of human papilloma infection so these are the etiological factors of squamous cell carcinoma whereas moving on to clinical features the all cancers have two very characteristic features in the form of one is ulceration and the second one is an indurated margin so these are the typical two striking features of squamous cell carcinoma now in histologic uh, types we have uh, three uh, major types in histologic classification uh, histologic types are uh, well differentiated well differentiated well differentiated uh, is slightly uh, towards a malignant region or the prognosis also is better in well differentiated group it consists of sheets and nests of cells with obvious origin from the squamous epithelium and cells are usually large and show a distinct cell membrane although intercellular bridges often mm, cannot be demonstrated nuclei are large and may demonstrate a good uh, deal of uh, variability in staining mitotic figures may be found uh, many of which are atypical and the most prominent features are individual cell individual cell keratinization okay individual cell keratinization and the formation of keratin pearls so these are the two striking features of well differentiated group whereas the moderately differentiated that is the second one moderately differentiated moderately differentiated uh where the tumor resemblance to the squamous epithelium is less pronounced this is more of squamous epithelium it is less uh pronounced towards the uh, squamous epithelium and the characteristic shape of the lesion that is the shape of the cells uh, not lesion cells may be altered and the growth rate is more rapid compared to the well differentiated and greater numbers of mitotic figures and they fail to form keratin the third type is poorly differentiated poorly differentiated is very little resemblance to the uh, cell of origin and will present diagnostic difficulties the prognosis of poorly differentiated is very difficult or very minimal i mean the recovery is very difficult with respect to a poorly differentiated group and this is like a stage three or four cancer this is the beginning stages stage 1 and stage 2 and metastasis involve chiefly submaxillary and superficial uh, deep cervical lymph nodes so submaxillary and deep cervical lymph nodes deep cervical lymph nodes so towards these nodal groups it will be uh, metastasis and the basic three types are well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated so as i mentioned uh, squamous cell carcinoma are of various type the first one is carcinoma of lip carcinoma of lip which occurs in elderly men especially in the lower lip and it is most common cause uh, is as we all know it is tobacco or through pipe smoking clinical features are begins with 
uh, or begins on the vermilion border of the lip on one side of the midline and often starts as a small area of thickening or induration and ulceration it enlarges then create a small crater like defect or produce an exophytic proliferitis so sometimes it will be exophytic or sometimes a crater like depression so it is generally slow to uh, metastasis and this if it is occur then it is going to ipsilateral uh, nodes and involves a submental or submaxillary nodes so contralateral metastasis may occur only if the lesion is near the midline otherwise it is going only to the one side okay if it is going either side it should be on the towards the midline and treatment we do either surgical ex excision or ex uh, x-ray treatment and usually it has a good prognosis whereas the tongue which has the least prognosis so it is uh, suggested that the syphilis and tongue carcinoma there is a relationship but nothing has proved yet so clinical features are a painless mass or ulcer which might become painful if it is secondarily infected it begins as a superficially indurated ulcer with slightly raised border and may develop into fungating exophytic mass fungating exophytic mass that is in tongue okay so there will be an infiltration to the deeper layer of tongue producing fixation and enduration develops on the lateral borders or the ventral surface of the tongue so lesion on the posterior portion are usually of a higher grade of malignancy and easily uh, go on metastasis and offer a poor prognosis if it is on the posterior part of tongue because of uh, its inaccessibility for a treatment so anterior part we can uh, go for a surgical excision or, or the posterior part the accessibility and uh, it is a poor prognosis when it is on the posterior part posterior part poor prognosis and treatment and uh, as I mentioned treatment is very difficult as uh, the efficacy of it depends on the efficacy of surgery and prognosis is also very poor so the squamous cell carcinoma the least prognosis is seen in tongue so whereas uh, carcinoma floor of the mouth okay floor of the mouth uh, when smoking especially pipe or cigar it is the most important in etiology it is an indurated ulcer of varying size situated on one side of the midline more frequently on the anterior portion of the floor because its location early extension into lingual mucosa of the mandible and then it goes to the tongue even to the submaxillary or sublingual glands so sometimes it may produce uh, limitation or the motion of the tongue or slurring of the speech slurring of the speech or tongue movements it may affect these two things tongue movements and slurring of the speech so contralateral metastasis is common as a primary lesion occurs mostly on the midline so surgical part it's also uh, like uh, we need to go for a radiation therapy it gives uh, better results than the surgery whereas a carcinoma of buccal mucosa so it is uh, most commonly seen in men and etiology it is uh, in area against the person has habitually carried a kid of chewing tobacco so smokeless tobacco where they used to keep in buccal uh, vestibule and uh, it creates a change in the epithelium which leads to squamous cell carcinoma of buccal mucosa and uh, clinical features usually develops along the inferior uh, uh, to a line opposite the plane of occlusion so it is a plane of occlusion so it is seen the below the line of occlusion where the buccal vestibule and where the people usually keeps the tobacco pouches 
solution is uh, often a painful ulcerative one where the induration and infiltration of deeper tissue is common some lesions may even be exophytic and metastasis is very frequent so treatment we need to uh, do a combination of surgery and x-ray radiation the carcinoma of gingiva uh, the problem is its similarity to common dental infection has frequently led to the delay in diagnosis or even misdiagnosis with respect to gingiva because the periapical lesions periapical uh, abscess all those may uh, cause the delay in diagnosis so carcinoma of gingiva is another problem which commonly found in the mandibular gingiva which initially present as an area of ulceration which may be purely erosive or may exhibit exophytic growth purely erosive or exophytic and it arises more commonly in edentulous areas and fixed gingiva that is attached gingiva is commonly involved than the marginal gingiva erosion of the underlying bone is frequent and the metastasis is more common from the mandibular gingiva and treatment also similarly we need to combine the surgical and radiation and carcinoma of palate is uh, not a very common lesion which the clinical features include poorly defined ulcerated painful lesion on one side of the midline it frequently crosses the midline and may extend laterally to include the lingual gingiva or posteriorly to involve the tonsillar pillar or even the uvula so that is a metastasis also is common now we uh, wind up the squamous cell carcinoma so squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type which has a uh, three different category that is well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated depends on the histologic features and prognosis also uh, inferior with respect to the poorly differentiated so we have a squamous cell carcinoma of lip tongue floor of the mouth gingiva buccal mucosa and palate it is a commonly asked essay question so next uh, i'll come up with a uh, another carcinoma in Uh, dentistry and more thank you hello everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more so we are continuing our malignant lesions of oral cavity uh, epithelial origin so now we have verrucous carcinoma so verrucous carcinoma we already learned the benign type that is verrucous uh, lesion or verrucous vulgaris which is a benign lesion which is all commonly known as what so this is a what the variant of squamous cell carcinoma so last session we had covered squamous cell carcinoma in detail so this is a what the variant that is a cauliflower like uh, verrucous appearance of squamous cell carcinoma is known as verrucous carcinoma so let's learn the details of verrucous carcinoma so this verrucous carcinoma which is a uh, predominantly exophytic overgrowth of well differentiated keratinized epithelium which is having minimal atypia okay which is having minimal atypia and with locally destructive pushing margins at its interface with the connective tissue so that is locally destructive pushing margins destructive pushing margins at at the interface with the connective tissue clinical features it is commonly seen in elder group with 60 to 70 years Uh, highest incidence and mainly on the buccal mucosa and gingiva are the common sites which appears as a papillary with pebble surface which is sometimes covered with a white leucoplakic film and 
These lesions on the gingiva, it may grow into the soft tissue and invade and destroy the underlying bone. Okay, so it may destroy the bone also. So regional lymph nodes are enlarged and tender, which simulate metastatic tumor. Pain and difficulty in mastication are common complaints. So this disease has a high occurrence rate in tobacco chewers. So tobacco chewing is the most common etiology in all these type of squamous cell carcinoma. And also smokers or snuffers or in patients having ill fitting dentures. So growth is usually slow and metastasis occurs late if at all this is happening it occurs at very later period it may become more aggressive if it is irradiated in histologic features it may be extremely deceptive and it is uh, mistaken for papilloma or benign epithelial hyperplasia because of its appearance and the epithelial proliferation with downgrowth of epithelium into connective tissue but usually is without true invasion so the well differentiated hyperplastic epithelium is organized into bulbous rite ridges which shows little mitotic activity pleomorphism or hyperchromatism and there will be cleft like spaces which is lined by a thick layer of paracaratin and paracaratin plugging so paracaratin plugging also occurs extending into the epithelium Okay, this paracaratin plugging will be extending to the epithelium. So, this cleft like spaces and paracaratin plugging, uh, they, these two features together constitute the hallmark of verrucous carcinoma. Okay, so paracaratin plugging and cleft like spaces are the hallmark of verrucous carcinoma. So this cleft like space is also aligned by paracaratin. Okay. So basement membrane is generally intact and usually having a heavy inflammatory infiltrate into the connective tissue. So the treatment part is basically a conservative excision and the risk of anaplastic transformation is there if it is radiated. So that is all about verrucous carcinoma disease. Another variant of squamous cell carcinoma which is commonly seen on buccal mucosa and gingiva which is a Watti variant that is a striking feature. So verrucous carcinoma has two uh, characteristic features that is paracaratin plugging and cleft like spaces which is lined by paracaratin. Okay, So that's all about verrucous carcinoma. I will come up with a new topic in to industry and more. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have a malignant condition which is known as malignant melanoma which is a neoplasm of epidermal melanocytes. So epidermal melanocytes which is one of the most biologically unpredictable and deadly of all human neoplasm. Okay, this is a very deadly neoplasm and which is very unpredictable. This malignant melanoma which is the most or the third most common cancer of skin of skin after basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma of K. This is about skin. So earlier it was believed that melanomas develop in nevi especially the junctional nevi but now it is thought that the lesions which were interpreted as junctional nevi were in fact the pre malignant melanocytic dysplasias. Okay. So melanocytic dysplasia. So before it was thought to be a junctional nevi, but now it is understood that it is a premalignant melanocytic dysplasia. So certain lesions considered to be premalignant melanomas are the acute nevi, dysplastic nevi, congenital nevi, and cellular blue nevi. So 
coming to the etiological factors uh, environmental factors are sun exposure artificial uv sources socio economic status fair skin red hair and number of melanocytic nevi all could be the etiological factors in genetical factors the familial melanoma familial melanoma and xeroderma pigmentosum okay the risk factors of oral melanomas are unknown basically they have no apparent relationship to chemical thermal or physical events to which the oral mucosa is continuously exposed so there are two phases in the growth of a melanoma that is a radial growth phase okay first one is radial growth phase radial growth phase is the initial phase which may last for many years and the neoplastic process is confined to the epithelium okay in radial growth the neoplastic activity is confined to epithelium only and the second phase is the vertical growth phase okay vertical growth phase which begins when the neoplastic cells populate the underlying connective tissue and in this phase so connective tissue what happens there will be metastasis so that is a two types of uh, growth seen in malignant melanoma that is uh, radial growth and vertical growth okay so we have four types of uh, melanoma that is the first one is superficial spreading type superficial spreading melanoma second one is nodular melanoma third one is lentigo maligna melanoma and the last one is the acral lentiginous melanoma so the clinical features of superficial spreading or ssm is which exists in a radial growth phase called premalignant melanosis and it present as a tan brown black or admixed lesions of uh, sun exposed skin especially the back side and vertical vertical growth phase is characterized by increase in size change in color nodularity and also ulceration in nodular melanoma which is nm no clinically recognizable radial growth phase and existing solely in a vertical growth phase only the vertical growth okay and it present as a sharply delineated nodule with a decrease of pigmentation may be pink or black which is known as uh, amelanotic melanoma amelanotic melanoma so amelanotic melanoma is nodular melanoma due to the its pigmentation it appear as a pink or black which is known as amelanotic melanoma and predilection for occurrence on the back and head and neck skin of the third one lendigo uh, maligna melanoma or lmm which exists in a radial growth phase which is known as lendigo maligna or melanotic freckle of hutchinson okay melanotic freckle of hutchinson and occurs characteristically as a macular lesion on the malar skin of the middle aged and elderly caucasian more common in women okay so this is more common in caucasian ethnicity and women okay in malar region so the last one or the acral lentigo melanoma which is developing on the palms and soles as well as on the toes and fingers which is characterized by macular lentigous pigmented area around a nodule they are extremely aggressive with rapid progression from the radial to vertical growth phase so the following criteria which helps in clinical diagnosis okay clinical diagnosis 
we can go for a a b c d e rule so a is the asymmetry b is border irregularity border irregularity c is color irregularity color irregularity okay d is diameter and e is elevation so this is the a b c d e rule in clinical diagnosis of malignant melanoma in border irregularity with blurred notched or ragged edges and color irregularity pigmentation is not uniform black brown red uh, tan white and blue can all appear together diameter greater than 6 mm growth in itself is a sign okay so that is the a b c d e rule asymmetry border irregularity color irregularity diameter and elevation whereas the oral manifestation it is twice as common in men than in women most commonly it is seen in 40 to 70 group age group predilection for the palate and maxillary gingiva palate and maxillary gingiva and uh, it appears as a deeply pigmented area at times ulcerated and hemorrhagic which tends to increase progressively in size and oral melanomas exist in superficial spreading acral lenticus and nodular types in histologic features we have malignant cells often as a nest or cluster in groups in an organoid fashion and they have large nuclei prominent nucleoli and show a nuclear pseudo inclusion and radial growth phase of superficial spreading melanoma is characterized by presence of large epithelioid melanocytes distributed in a so-called packetoid manner which is known as buckshot scatter okay buckshot scatter buckshot scatter which is nothing but the presence of large epithelioid melanocytes distributed in a packetoid manner so when melanocytes penetrate the basement membrane a host cell response develops which destroy the tumor cell and vertical growth phase is characterized by proliferation of malignant cells in the dermis okay and the nodular type is characterized by large epithelioid melanocytes within the connective tissue and tumor cells may invade and ulcerate the overlying epithelium and penetrate the deep soft tissues whereas a lentigo maligna which is characterized by increased number of atypical melanocytes moving on to the treatment and prognosis the surgical excision for cutaneous lesion should be performed when lymph nodes are involved regional lymph node dissection if tumors are greater than 0.75 millimeter in thickness and located in the so-called band sites that is back arm neck and scalp this is band site so it have a greater tendency to metastasis so surgical excision for oral melanoma jaw resection and lymph node resection should be performed women have a much better survival rate up to 50 years and then the rate declines nodular and superficial spreading melanoma have a much poorer prognosis than the lmm tumors which is less than 0.75 mm rarely metastasis or it could be rarely cause a reason for death and the oral melanoma have much poorer prognosis than the cutaneous ones so that is all about uh, malignant melanoma so we have discussed the various details and the abcd rule uh, various types its histological features clinical features and finally the treatment and bands criteria buckshot uh, scatter appearance so it is a commonly asked essay question so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you